Welcome back Jack Complex, open daily herbal and traditional pharmacy. Alternative medicine products for all various ailments. Visit our vegetarian cafeteria, affordable meals made to order, burgers, hot dogs, soup, sandwiches, etc. Location 25 Dodge Rock Street, Triumph East Coast Demerara, behind the regional 4 RDC. Telephone 626 5877 or 220 4386. Remember, you are what you eat. They're making new laws every day. And those are the master they throw away. The things they go about and preach. It's not. Shaitani Rajim Bismillah Rahman Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Rahman Rahim Maliki Yawmidin Iya Khana Budu Iya Khana Stain in the Nasrat al Mustaqim Sirat al Adin al Amtalain Khair al Magdubi Alain Wala. Amen. In the name of the Almighty God, most gracious and most merciful. All praise is due to the Almighty God, the beneficent and the merciful. We give praise and thanks to God for bringing us together, those of you who are here and those of you who are viewing this program. And we ask God for his mercy and his blessings, especially during this month of Ramadan. I greet you, my brothers and sisters, with the greetings of peace. To my Christian brothers and sisters, peace be unto you. To my Hindu brothers and sisters, Namaste. To my Rastafarian brothers and sisters, Ja peace and Ja love and to my Muslim brothers and sisters and all other denominations, I greet you with the greetings of peace in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, in this masjid, in this mosque, in our community, we are of the opinion as taught to us by our scriptures that we cannot worship God, speak about God, speak about a higher power, speak about a higher instant in our lives without accepting the fact that everything that has to deal with God has to deal with us, which means that whatever is happening in our society, whatever is going on with us, God is involved. And so I want to reflect on something that is being celebrated at this point in time, and that is the international women's rights. Brothers and sisters, if we look at the situation that's happening in our world today, and we look at the terror, and we look at the traumas, we look at the punishment of our children who are made by mothers, and we look at the punishment of women and children, we will understand that something is definitely wrong with man. Why I say that is because 300 years ago, in comparison to today, 
the rights of women have escalated to such an extent that it's reached a stage where women are having women liberation movements. Why are women forced to have liberation movements? Why are women feeling to themselves they can speak to men and treat men the way they want and they want to be liberated from men? When you hear about women's liberation movement, it means that it's women who wants to liberate themselves from what? Why are women wanting to liberate themselves and what from? From men. Our scriptures have taught men and women how to treat each other. They have taught each other how to live with each other. According to our scriptures, we were taught how to speak to each other, how to abide and love each other, how to train our children, how our children must be brought up, and how we must behave as parents to those children, and how our attitudes to one another would reflect on the behavior of our children. It is no more so. It is no more so. And so we have reached the stage where women feel to themselves that they have got to look after themselves and look after their children because they cannot depend on men anymore. And it's a very sad, very sad situation. Men have brought together a system that is called governments. And these governments are especially designed to be run and operated according to how men would like it. It starts with the word government. You want to spell it? G-O-V-E-R-N. What's the next letters? M-E-N. Govern men. And then they have E-N-T. Every nation's tragedy. That's the government. And all the governments, it means govern men who are governing, and it's becoming every nation's tragedy. Governments. It's very typical. G O V E R N and then M E N. That is what has happened and that is why our world is the way it is and the wars and the children and the women are being killed, mutilated, oppressed and suppressed. But they are standing up. They are standing up because they have reached the stage where they have International Women's Month, International Women's Day, Liban's Revelation, uh, Liberation Movements. They are no more prepared to depend on what men tell them. And it's a sad thing. It means, therefore, that men and man is slowly losing his power. I would go so far to say that he has lost his power. One of the first women that have ruled this earth, uh, ruled a country of this earth, is Indira Gandhi. One of the first females who, was, who became Prime Minister of India. But before Indira, there were women like Cleopatra. There were women like Nefertiti, queens. You know, queens in France, queens in England, Queen Victoria, they were women. There was a time where they were matriarchs, where the world was ruled by women. Our scriptures have a way of not relating that to us. Our scriptures have a way of telling us as when men have always been the rulers, but it was not like that. 
And today it's being reversed. The women are now taking back the positions that they feel they should have because of their children. We are having a war right now in between Israel and Palestine. And if you look at the suffering of the women and the suffering of the children, it's women and children who are suffering, women and children who are dying. And so the women are no more prepared to accept that their children are suffering. I mean, there are men, those of us among our men, who still regard the power and the status that Almighty God has given us as men. But we are becoming more and more in the background. Men marrying men, homosexuality, something that was never prescribed by Almighty God. So we are losing even men in that area. And the men who are still prepared to be righteous, the men who are still prepared to stand up for what God has prescribed and what God has ordained, these men are in a position that they are being fought by other men. When we hear today of men who are supposed to be leaders of countries, men who are having the status of president and prime ministers, when you hear them falling, behind all of them are women. They say, for example, that behind every great man is a woman. That's what they say. But behind every man that has shamed himself and disgraced himself is also a woman. We look at our prisons and we see that 95% of the men in jail, in prison, are because of problems with women. So brothers and sisters, we have to try and understand that the women are not giving up and they are not going to stop. They are going to continue. Governments govern men, M-E-N, men who are governing, E-N-T-S, every nation's tragedy. And we are seeing it. Tell me one nation on the face of this earth now that is having men as their presidents, that is being run in a manner that is serene, solemn, and in accordance with what Almighty God has ordained. One, just tell me one land, just one. In the Caribbean, for example, let us look in the Caribbean and see how many of these so-called governed men, hence, how many islands, but there is one island where there is an amount of peace and serenity, and that is run by a woman. You see, why is it like that? because of the disobedience of man. The disobedience of man who wants to behave as if he is God. Man who wants to play as if he is the creator of this universe. Man who wants and who has titled himself as govern men. Men who are to govern 
and he has no idea of what it is. If you want to govern man, learn from the governor, the governor, the one who created you, your maker. That is the governor. And that is the one that will teach you to govern. But you find that it's too disciplined. For God demands discipline. That is what God demands. Discipline, nothing else. In accordance with the will and the way that that will must be carried out. You know, when we hear about International Women's Day and we hear about International Women's this and that, we wonder to ourselves. I heard a woman said that it is no more time to say no and can't. She was speaking on a forum to other women. She says it's no, the time has passed where we must say, we cannot say no and can't and cannot be done. That's the situation that we are facing. And we continue to face that way and we continue to be confronted with women who are ferocious, women who feel to themselves that they can do what they like, speak how they like, and demand what they want. But you know, brothers and sisters, it's not that the women really would like to do that. It's because they have no other choice. The men who are supposed to be taking care of them. Our scriptures tell us that man's job in terms of his relationship to woman is to protect her, provide for her, and help her to discipline their children. Today it's the opposite. A lot of women are providing for men. A lot of women are protecting men. And a lot of women are single parents because they have no men no fathers to look after their children, to stay with their children, and to help them to discipline their children. Do you know how many single parents we have in this country? A multitude of single parents. A multitude of women who have got children without fathers. And this is only a handful. This country is only a handful. What about the rest of the world? And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The women who are fighting for their rights, they are not alone. It's an international organization. It's women from all over the world who are belonging and adhering to the international women's movement for liberation. They are not turning back. We have a few days ago, we had International Women's Day. Why is it important? Have you ever heard about an International Men's Day? No? An International Women's Day. There are many places in the world where God is worshipped as female and not as male. Many places, many countries where God is seen as a female and not as a male. And we see that in accordance with such philosophies that man has put himself in a situation and in a position where I don't think it's going to be easy 
for him to come out. You know, when you are oppressed and you fight for your rights and you fight for your liberty, I can tell you that because of the position of the four parents of the people of African descent, when you fight for your liberty and you fight for your rights, and while you are fighting, you are told, okay, we are going to give you equal rights. Now, women has been fighting over three, four hundred, five hundred years for their rights. And they are being told now that they have equal rights. Now, if I am oppressing you and you are fighting against me for your rights, and I realize that I am not winning, then I says, okay, here, man, we are equal. From the time I say you are equal, it means I am losing the battle. That's why I am giving in to your father. Woman doesn't believe that man is giving her any equal rights. She does not believe it. She does not accept it. That's why she wants liberation. She doesn't accept that. She does not believe that she's being given equal rights because she's looking at women in other countries. A few days ago, some Muslims, and I don't know what kind of Islam they're practicing, but that's their own. But they can't get me to practice that. They have captured 259 women, girls. 259, and they're threatening to kill them. Some of them have raped the girls. I'm telling you this in the month of Ramadan from a masjid, from a mosque. You see, I don't beautify things. I don't beautify nothing. I believe in truth, and truth is truth. They have said that they want $20 billion. You hear what they're asking for? And they say if they don't get it, they're going to kill all of these girls. Last year, the same thing happened. They went into a Christian school, and they took 170-something young girls to force them into Islam, for them to become Muslims. Brothers and sisters, one thing we must understand is that the philosophy and the doctrine of Islam is no more like the Prophet Muhammad preached it. It's no more. Islam has been hijacked. Other people have hijacked it. There is a hadith, a saying of a brother called Zaid, Brother Zaid. And he related that the Prophet said he had a dream. This dream was a dream of black sheep. He dreamt that he saw a set of black sheep because the Prophet Muhammad is a black Arab. And all of a sudden in this dream, white sheep started to come. And the white sheep overtook the black sheep. This white sheep have been the people of Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and these places who have incorporated themselves into Islam, have taken it over, and are forcing, especially some of our black brothers and sisters, our original, the original teachings of the Prophet have been twisted into what they would like it to be. We have a scene in Palestine and in Israel. Now in Palestine, if you look, you will see Arabs, and they all claim to be Muslims. But that's not the Muslims that were with the Prophet Muhammad. They are the Arab Muslims that infiltrated. Now Palestine has got also black Muslims. And they have a government in Palestine. In that government, there is not one black Muslim. Israel are Jews. In Israel, they have black Jews. 
But in the Israeli government, there is not one black Jew. Saudi Arabia has got a whole cabinet. They are in charge of Mecca. Their whole government, here, government, G O V E R N M E N, government, E N T, every nation's tragedy. And in Saudi Arabia, there is not one black minister. Muslims, there are Muslims there. I'm telling you about Muslim countries in Iran, in Iraq. In Morocco, in Persia, all of these people who claim that's the white sheep that Prophet Muhammad spoke about that will encompass the black sheep. In every one of those governments, there are not one black minister that is representative of what Muhammad was teaching. So the teachings of Islam, it's just like the teachings of Christianity. The teachings of Christianity today, it's not the teachings of the original aspect of Christian teaching. Christianity has been hijacked. Islam has been hijacked. Hinduism has been hijacked. You go into the original teachings of these religions and you'll see it's not in comparison as it was today. And man has done that. Today, women are preaching in churches. Why? How has it reached the stage that women have got to preach in churches? It wasn't like that. Women are preaching in Islam. They're not yet in the mosques, but they are preaching on television. They are preaching in, in, in lectures. They are giving lectures. Huh? Women in Hinduism, they are all women who believe in the liberation of women. And so, brothers and sisters, we have to understand that the only reason why women have got a liberation movement going, and it's not going to stop, it is going to continue, continue until as it was before, it will become the position of women in leadership. Right now, they are in leadership roles in the United Nations all over the place. Look at your news. Look at your CNN news, all your news that are on television, and see who's reading the news. See who are the reporters, all female, all women. They continue for man has failed terribly to rule and run this earth as he was advised by God to do. He has taken it upon, taken it upon himself to believe that he can take the place of the creator, that he can take the place of the maker. So he has formed governments with a system that's called democracy and that is what he has used to bring himself down and that is what women is using to put him more down and to carry herself up also billahi min shaitani rasheem bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillah alhamdulillah before I close, brothers and sisters, as I told you, that when anything is happening, we feel that the religious leaders should be apart. They are not taken apart. The religious leaders all over the world have taken a back seat and are allowing the political leaders to run the world. Naturally, the political leaders are not ordained with the teachings of what Almighty God has sent with his prophets and his messengers. So their way of organizing society, govern, M-E-N, yeah, governing men, the way they are running the society is not the way in which God has ordained it. The religious leaders are preaching about the way, but they are not practicing the way. 
And so our women and our children are suffering. I want to touch now on the teachers. The teachers of our country that has been on strike and that have been saying what they have been saying. Slippers on the ground, we're not backing down. But what I want our men to understand that the majority of teachers out there are women. And you hear what they're saying? Slippers on the ground, we're not backing down. And let me tell you men, if you feel that they are joking, they are not joking. And they are not going to back down. And they are not going to finish until they win. If you feel that you can deny women today the rights that they are fighting for, for the women are not fighting for the rights of themselves alone. They are fighting for the rights of women all over the world. And the women all over the world are backing them. That's why they can say, slippers on the ground, we are backing down. And they will not be backing down. <laughs> If they feel that, they, you know, they had, they took a rest, they went to the table, they said they're going to talk to the government, right? Don't forget, G-O-V-E-R-N-M-E-N-E-N-T-S, -E 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 every nation's tragedy, the men who are governing. And they sat down and they were refused to be heard. Their demands were not heard. And I understand that they are saying they're coming back out again. But let me tell you something, men. I wouldn't wish for that if I were you. All you men who are involved and who are denying the women of their rights, I am not going to wish that for you. I wouldn't want them to come back out again because you are not going to like what you're going to see. If they ever come back out again, because they haven't achieved, you know, okay, the worst thing you can do is fool a woman, you know. You ever got a woman and tell you that you love her and she finds you with another woman? It's worries, troubles, problems. You can't fool them. You can't fool these women and tell them you're going to talk to them. And when they sit down to talk, you change your mouth. This is not, I said, for them. That's for their children and their grandchildren, for many of them. Those, their so-called providers and protectors are not there. The men who are supposed to provide and protect are not there, so they are there on their own, and they are not going to back down this time. I am telling you, and I am warning you, and I'm warning you in the name of Almighty God, that this time they're going for the full thing. They're not going to stop. No way are they going to stop. So if you know what's good for you, men, I would advise you, again, in the name of Allah, in the name of Almighty God, I would advise you to find a solution for these women. Because these are not ordinary women. These are women who are hurt. Uh -huh. There is a, 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 a chapter in the Holy Quran called Women. I think it's the only scripture on the face of the earth that has a chapter specifically dedicated to women, the Holy Quran. And Allah says in, the, in that scripture at the beginning, he says, beware of the wombs that bear you. You hear what he says? Beware of the wombs that bear you. When women become vicious, and when women want to be liberated, beware. And I'm telling you, don't let them come out again. Because if they come out again, you have to go in. Let me tell you that, whoever you might be, and however strong you might feel you are, any time our sisters come back out in order to get their rights and to get what they feel is just for them, 
you have to go in. Brothers and sisters, it is a sad situation, but that's the way it is. And they are not concerned. And the reason why it is like that is that man's failure to obey God, man's disrespect of God, man's in disobedience to God, and man's failure to accept the fact that women and men are not the same. They are two different people, two different individuals. They are not the same, and they could never be equal. So don't talk about equal rights. If they were equal, they would keep quiet. They are not equal. A woman takes the sperm of a man in her, and after nine months, she brings out a being looking like him. That is not an ordinary person. You see, that is not an ordinary person. They say in the Bible, it says that God said to Adam, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make a help meet for him. And the interpretation that I have received as a little boy growing up is that this help, it means that she can do everything for you. Whatever you want, she's going to do. She's going to serve you. That is the help. That's how they interpret it. But let me tell you something before I close. That help is to help you to be a man, not help to serve you and to have you tell her what to do and she do what you want to do. That help is a help to make you understand that you don't joke with her and don't make her, don't make you, her feel that she and you are equal and you don't feel that she is equal to you. That help is to help man to understand that he has to be disobedient, he has, sorry, he has to be obedient to Almighty God in order to live with woman on this earth. And again, I'm saying, our teachers out there, the majority are women, just a handful of men. And more women, their, their, their problem, the, our teachers, is not being dealt with with only the women teachers of Guyana. It's being dealt with the women internationally. It's an international movement. And they are not, if they come back out again, they are not going back in without getting what they want. That is the truth, brothers and sisters. And the truth is the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. As-salamu alaykum. Practical experience is the greatest teacher. Memory is the greatest truth. And ingratitude, ungratefulness is the greatest sin. Remember that. Breaking down is a whole big run around. A lot of talk is what goes on. The world is left to mourn. Starvation taking toll. Weapons out of control. The atmosphere is cold. Welcome back Jack Complex, open daily herbal and traditional pharmacy, alternative medicine products for all various ailments. 
Visit our vegetarian cafeteria, affordable meals made to order, burgers, hot dogs, soup, sandwiches, etc. Location 25 Dodge Rock Street, Triumph East Coast Demerara, behind the regional 4 RDC. Telephone 626 5877 or 220 4386. Remember, you are what you eat.